Hi everyone. Have you ever thought about why we stay in Canada? I'm sure all of you know somebody who has left Canada in the last few years. And even the mainstream media has reported about the number of immigrants that have moved here looking to, you know, make a better life, get ahead. Um, that have actually left to move back to where they came from or live somewhere else. And it made me stop and think because I have considered in the last couple of years as well about leaving Canada. And then it's always boiled down to, well, where would you go? And so many places are having the same problems that we're having and having the same fight that we're having. Um, where would you go? If you have some comments, please add them to the, the, the comments and the feedback. But why, why are so many people leaving Canada? And I started to think about this and um, our cost of living, like especially in comparison to other parts of the world. Um, and, and I've worked with clients over the years who have retired and because they've retired, you know, they're looking on a, a looking at living on a smaller income and they want to maintain that same sort of lifestyle that they got, but of course don't want to run out of money. So yeah, many of them have moved to different places around the world where the cost of living is not as great. And you know, whether it be vehicles, housing, groceries, income tax, sales tax, GST, um, it seems like we're taxed to death in Canada. And then that got me to thinking about, well, what if you're an entrepreneur? I know so many people who have had so many great business ideas that have just picked up, packed up and left Canada because it is so difficult here to work through the regulatory system and to work through the bureaucracy to build a business. And of course, we're already at a disadvantage. We're a small country of 40 million people in comparison to something like the United States, just south of us, that you can go easily start a business and a large population, you know, 340, 350 million people. So you would think that our little tiny country would be trying to make it easy for people and trying to attract, you know, entrepreneurs and investment but no um, we just seem to keep deterring investment you see what's happening here in Alberta you know and the constant fight with the federal government and you know I'm not looking at, to subsidize businesses to come here that's at the taxpayers expense again that's more expense to us making things less affordable um, I want real entrepreneurs, people who want to come here because, hey, the taxes are advantageous. We've got a skilled labor force, which that is not even the case anymore. Um, if you take a look at our truly talented individuals, those business minded entrepreneurs, go getters, they're all leaving. They're going south of the border. They're going elsewhere. Um, it, there's a brain drain happening in this country. Why? For many of the reasons we just all already discussed. But then you think about, okay, well, it's a safe place to live. And I think in relative terms it is, but crime is increasing. And we're seeing, you know, shootings at malls in Alberta, like things that we never would have even dreamed possible um, five years ago. And now they're becoming like monthly events. Um, you, it's not shocking to people to hear about this anymore. Drug use. I won't go downtown on the LRT here in Calgary anymore. Um, it's just, it's not safe in my opinion. And when people are on drugs, they are not in their right mind, which is disconcerting. You know, people do things and they don't even, they're not even really aware of what they're doing. You know, random acts of violence are now becoming a thing. Um, something has really changed in Canada and the woke ideology, and I know this is, uh, is around the world, but you know, you see now what's happening in the Netherlands, you see what's happening in Argentina, you see what's happening in Italy, you know, with uh, a little bit more of a populist government, government that's coming into play and, and people are waking up. They're becoming aware of the problems. They're saying no more mass immigration. You know, no more woke ideology. Um, they're changing how they present information to the universities and to schools. And 
everything here, we, we, we have attacks on freedom of speech. We've got censorship happening at a government level, which is very totalitarian. This is not a free country. Um, free countries don't have those types of restrictions on law-abiding citizens who should be able to freely speak their opinion. Politics. Um, you would think, we all want to think and believe that we have a choice in who we elect. But I know firsthand that we don't because in order to get even into the system, there are gatekeepers. And those gatekeepers are very good at keeping people out. People like you and I who they don't want in their little elitist club because it would upset their apple cart. It is a challenge to their authority, a challenge to their power. We're not controllable. So very overregulated, very expensive, too large. Government has just gotten way too, too big and way too powerful. And there's really just no incentive for people. I have struggled with what to do next. And I, I have so many great ideas and it all boils down to, do I really want to do them in Canada? And, and I'm being sincere, I'm still here. Alberta is my home and I think by far, if you're going to be anywhere in Canada as an entrepreneur, as a business-minded, free-spirited person, Alberta, I think, is the one last standing place uh, in Canada to do that. And we're fighting back hard to make sure that we don't lose that strong and free, that entrepreneurial spirit, that um, spirit of capitalism and competition and um, in, encourages and incentivizes people to be the best that they can be. So, you know, if you're, I, I, when I talk about Canada, I'm talking about as the whole, and I think Alberta is the bright light in that. But um, employment right now, the, the largest employer is government. Um, and, and again, if, if you have children, I think about this all the time, I have a daughter, and if she wants to work for government or some sort of quasi-government, a job, whether it be university or a teacher or a doctor, or, you know, those types of things. Sure, there's opportunity here, but nowhere near the same level of opportunity that you could get, again, just south of the border from here. And what, where, where's the incentive? Where's the incentive? Why would you stay? Um, we have some of the worst health care in the G7 longest wait lines you know we still have places like in bc that you have to wear a mask to enter they're still pushing vaccinations on people um, we've had people literally who've been denied service because they were unvaxxed in this province in this country and you know free is not free it's some of the most expensive we alberta spends probably more than any other province on health care and we have some of the worst health care so money is not the problem um so what is you know, that, there's not a reason to stay. You know, I think our culture is being divided and there's so much division right now. And as far as, um, you know, meaningful discussions and debates and, you know, being able to engage with people on the street about, you know, the problems that we're having, everybody tends to be very polite and, you know, we don't want to upset the apple cart as Canadians and we get bowled over. Let's be honest, we're just getting bulldozed by a small minority right now that just happens to be much louder than we want to be. And our silence is killing us. We're losing our culture. We're losing who we are as a, as a people and as a country. Um, lack of talent, we've talked on that. We, I think we have a brain drain. People are just leaving for better opportunities, uh, bigger opportunities, more opportunity in other places. You know, we have, let's talk about government again. Our prime minister is probably one of the most despised men right now on the planet. Um, definitely does not make Canada proud. Certainly doesn't make me proud. And it's embarrassing. It truly is. So why would we stay? You know, Canada has seen you potentially have bank accounts frozen. Um, they've attacked businesses, you know, no privacy. We have no private property rights in this country. That is becoming more and more evident to more and more people. You know, individual rights and freedoms are under attack, lack of protections from the government who are supposed to be protecting our individual freedoms. They're the ones attacking them. Um, right now, we're talking about disarming the population and the government has talked about going after people's private property, um, guns, and 
it, it's really hard to connect with people here. And if all that is not enough, the last and uh, least that I can think of is weather. <laughs> so, you know, with everything else, if we've got to put up with all of that, uh, even if that's what's happening everywhere else, why not put up with it somewhere where the sun shines a little bit warmer um, and it's it's far more pleasant and to get outside and do things all year round as opposed to, you know, having to put up with snow, shoveling snow and winter for eight months of the year. So I'd be really curious to know if you have actually thought and considered leaving Canada and why you have thought about leaving Canada. For me, the biggest one has probably got to be lack of opportunity here um, because of government bureaucracy and regulation and the fact that I have a daughter who, what am I leaving her with? Um, would I be better off to set her up somewhere else where she's got more opportunity or do you stay and stick it out um, and just, you know, put up with what you've got? So be really interested to hear what you think, what you have to say. You know, you, I'm sure you've had friends, family who've left. Why did they leave? Do they go back and forth? Leave us a comment. God bless. And please don't forget to like, share, and hit the notification.